Okay, <clears throat> uh, this is the endocrine system part two. In the first part, we generally introduced to the endocrine system, and we ended up with a focus on how lipid based steroid hormones uh, function to bring about um, changes in their target cells, the cells that these hormones are designed to make do something. This part is beginning with how protein based hormones work, those hormones that are made out of protein, how they work and how that's different. The fundamental difference is that lipids can enter cells because of their lack of polarity, they're nonpolar, and protein based hormones cannot enter cells. So when a protein hormone uh, interacts with a cell, it's got to dock onto a receptor, which is what we see right here, and then it stays on the outside, but causes the receptor to cause some action on the inside of the cell. The protein can't get in because, if you remember, most proteins um, are too big and have some sort of polarity about them that would cause them to get hung up with these phospholipids, the phosphate groups on the phospholipids, rather than being able to penetrate through. So. <clears throat> This is the target cell. This is the cell membrane, the plasma membrane, as you can see the cytoplasm, uh, and that's the receptor protein we've just been talking about. Now there's your um, the protein-based hormone docked into the um, <clears throat> the receptor protein. Okay, binding to that receptor activates a cytoplasmic signal of some kind. Very often the signal is a chemical called GTP. GTP is like ATP. It does not have quite as much energy available to it, which is why ATP is the preferred uh, molecule for energy use in cells, but GTP functions in much the same way and loses a phosphate group. Okay. GTP <clears throat> will activate something called a G protein, and that's what you see here, this uh, GTP molecule activating this purple blob that is to represent this thing called a G protein. Now, the gene protein, uh, the, I'm sorry, the G protein is activating some enzyme, whatever that is, okay? Now, this enzyme in turn causes ATP to be become something we call cyclic AMP or CAMP. Okay, so obviously we are losing some phosphate groups here. This CAMP molecule is going to act as a secondary messenger to take this message that something needs to happen in the cell. It will activate another enzyme, which perhaps activates some other enzyme, and so on, until we get the the product that we need. Now, the first part of this process, if you go back up, right up in here where my little cursor is swirling around, that is the signaling stage of this protein hormone activity. We're going to signal that something needs to happen. Now, this where number two is here, this whole section right in here is called transduction. This is where we are taking that signal and converting it to a form that causes the activity we want to happen. Okay, this is also this is referred to as a secondary messenger si system because the C amp molecule ultimately is going to be the thing that activate the enzymes that are actually going to do the work to produce the action that we need to have happen. Okay, um, and that's the response. That's the ultimate response that we were hoping to get. Uh, all these other responses here, these other activation of enzymes are things that have to happen, but they're not the goal. This is the goal. We've kind of seen similar things when we've talked about biochemical pathways. This is kind of just a different sort of biochemical pathway. Um, all right. Um, called a signal transduction pathway. If you look up here, if you hear, read the term signal transduction, the first thing you should think of is this protein hormone where the protein signals causes a chain reaction inside the cell to get to some action that we want to occur. Okay, now this slide is taking what you just saw and practically repeating it, but we're putting it in terms of real a, a real hormone in the body. Epinephrine is the adrenaline hormone, the fight or flight hormone. If the adrenaline is coursing through your veins, your heart rate is going to accelerate, your your breathing rate is going to accelerate, and you're going to be uh, energized to do something, okay? To fight for your life, run for your life, whatever that may be. Now, in this case, we're looking at a liver cell. 
Okay, and here is the receptor protein in the membrane of the liver cell. Okay, now in this case, what you're seeing over here is where the adrenal gland is found. It sits right on top of the kidney and it makes ad uh, epinephrine, adrenaline, if you will, and it would. Uh, Upon the right stimulus, you're frightened about something or whatever, it, the epinephrine would be produced and secreted into the bloodstream. Uh, the epinephrine cannot enter into cells, okay? It docks on the, um, the receptor, uh, and there's the signal part of this whole pathway. This activates, this receptor will then activate GTP, which we've already talked about. The GTP will then be stimulated to bind to, in the form of GDP, we've lost a, um, a phosphate group when this happens, so the GDP, uh, just like ATP to ADP, this is GTP to GDP, this form of it will activate this protein called a gene a G protein the G protein is then in turn going to interact with this chemical called adenyl cyclase you do not need to remember that um, but this in turn is going to activate ATP molecules and convert them into what are called C amp molecules. And this won't do just one. It will do many, 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 C, create many C amp molecules. Uh, remember, it's an enzyme. Enzymes can be used over and over and over and over again. Okay? Now, the C amp will activate another type of uh, uh, enzyme. This is a protein kinase. Now remember kinases are things that phosphorylate th other things. Okay, we learned that. So we're activating another kinase, another phosphorylating enzyme. You really do not need to remember these names. Please don't try. But understand the idea that we are trans uh, translating, if you will, or transduction is the better word, transducing this uh, message that we're getting, hey, you need to do something, you need to get the cell active, and we're conveying that message through this series of chemical reactions. Now, the ultimate result is to activate glycogen phosphorylase. Now, I don't know if, again, you can remember back to the beginning of the year, but glyco, glyco tips you off that it's a carbohydrate. Glycogen is that carbohydrate that's a lot like starch, but plants don't make it. Animals make it. It is the animal storage carbohydrate uh, that we can make and we store it in our livers. Now, if you are getting a message from your adrenal gland that says, hey, you need to get active, why would you want to uh, get into your glycogen storehouse? Well, because glycogen is carbohydrate, carbohydrate is energy, and the whole point of this is to provide your cells with energy so that you can run or fight for your life or whatever it is you, you need to do. So, this transduction pathway ultimately activates this particular enzyme glycogen phosphorylase, which takes the glycogen that is stored in your liver and converts it to its usable form glucose which can be directly entered into your uh, bloodstream and entered into your uh, cell respiration pathway in your mitochondria. So what we're doing here with the adrenaline, the epinephrine, is signaling cells in the liver to begin breaking down glycogen so that we can use this glycogen uh, in cell respir uh, this glucose in cell respiration. Now, liver cells are the only cells that have this particular receptor to do this stuff. So the adrenaline would not be affecting cells in your, you know, your bones, for example, because they don't have any receptors to respond to it, but your liver cells do, and this is the action that your liver cells would take. It, their part in this is to make sure that you've got enough energy to do whatever it is you needed you need to do. Okay. All right. So that's the response. So signal, transduction, and response. Okay. Now, what's the deal with the secondary messenger system? Why, why go through all of this? Well, there is one word on the slide. You're going to see a lot of things pop up, but it's going to be one word that should strike you over and over again. There's your signal. But here, this one signal can create many, many, many 
can activate many, many, many GTPs, which activate many, many, many G proteins, which activate many, many, many ad adenyl cyclase molecules, and so on amplification of the message. We get a rapid, much more rapid amplification of this message because if you need to fight for your life or run for your life, you need that to happen pretty quickly. And so this is a way for this chemical message to uh, that starts out very small to become big relatively quickly. Okay, So we've talked about the uh, hormone system being not as quick as the nervous system and it's not, but this is one way to make that a more potent response uh, by amplifying this message many, many times. So the secondary messenger system acts uh, to amplify the message. And that's what you need to remember about why the uh, second mes messenger system is beneficial. It acts to amplify hormones are secreted in really quite small amounts. You don't need a whole lot of a hormone to have a huge effect because of the second messenger uh, secondary messenger system and it becomes a much faster response than it might be otherwise okay all right I think I will stop there because again it will take the, the uh, software a lot of time to upload this so we'll stop there and then we're going to go through several uh, hormone cycles uh, sp focusing on different hormones okay uh, thanks a lot get ready for part three